In this video, I'm going to show you an AI image generation platform that's beginner friendly and doesn't require a monthly subscription. We're going to take a tour of ArtSpace and I'm going to show you how you can get it on a lifetime deal. I'm already logged into ArtSpace. So I'm just going to click on this button that says continue drawing, Bob, because that's me, Bob. And that brings me into my ArtSpace, which is a big old blank canvas. It's very simple. At the bottom, I have a prompt box. I have a big blue button over here to generate and that's it. The buttons you see over on the left, those are not settings that you have to fiddle with. These are things like the image gallery, the blog, your membership, community, and a link to the getting started guide, which has written instructions and video tutorial. The last prompt I used is still down here in the prompt box. I'll get rid of that and it says, what would you like to draw? I'm just going to say a dog and a cat napping on a porch swing and I'll hit the blue button over in the bottom right corner. After about 10 seconds, we have our image. I say that looks like a porch swing and I believe that is a cat and a dog and they both seem to be napping. So for prompt adherence, I think it did pretty well, and I think it's a pretty decent image. If we hover over that image, you'll see you have two options. You can download it or you can delete it. So far, this seems super simple, maybe even a little bit too simple. I'd like a few options and settings when I'm generating images, and I'd like some editing capabilities as well. Currently, we're in the simple interface, and the only thing that we could change is down here in the bottom right corner where it says format one to one, we could switch that to 16 by nine for the aspect ratio of our image generation. But really there's nothing else in the simple interface that you can do. There's no other image generation settings and no editing. But if we come up into the upper right hand corner where it says try expert interface, we just switch this little toggle from the baby stroller and it flips us over into the expert interface. And the expert interface gives us some more options and some more tools, but it's not overwhelming by any means. We've still got our prompt box down at the bottom. We've still got our big blue create button. What we've added are these settings down the right side where we can select a model by default, it's on Nova 2024 Flux. If we click that, we have our choice of about six other models in addition to the Nova 2024 Flux, but I am just gonna leave it on that one. We have a toggle for boost visual vibrance, which is something that I've left on. And then we also have a toggle for smart content filter. If we turn off that toggle for the smart content filter, we get this little acknowledgement that basically says, if you're choosing to do artistic things that aren't filtered, you better behave yourself. And you can either accept or you can don't accept. You can add a negative prompt, but that is optional. And then you can enter a seed number. We're not going to fool with that. And in some models, not in the Nova 2024 Flux, but in some models, you can provide a seed image, which is used for image guidance or image reference. And now in the expert interface, our aspect ratio has moved to the top right corner of our art box. So up here where it says one to one, 1024, we can click on that and select a different aspect ratio all the way up to 4096 by 4096. I've used the max resolution and it does take a little bit longer to generate. So I'm just going to stick with the default one to one 1024 by 1024. This white square is our art box. We can move it around our canvas anywhere we want. And everything behind here is the canvas. If we come over here in the top right and click this move tool, then we can grab and move the canvas and the art box and any images that we already have on this canvas. We can move them all around at the same time. Let's generate another image, but this time let's come up here to this light bulb, which is formulas, and this is a pretty nifty tool. You provide it with a subject. For example, they have Sphinx in here. You're not limited to one word. I'll start with something really simple, like a woman sitting on a park bench. Then we can pick a style like Fauvism, Afrofuturism, and all the isms. If you drop this down, you'll see you have a whole bunch of things to pick from, styles that I didn't even know existed. The ones I recognize, I don't think really fit what I'm going for. So instead of picking styles, I'm just gonna get rid of both of those that are there. You can also add artist styles. We'll hit that drop down, and there are a whole lot of artists in there. Now I'm not really going for any artist particular style, so I'm gonna get rid of the artists as well. Next, you have formats. I'll clear out those options and then drop that down. I'm going to pick photograph and how about shot on iPhone 11? Under the boosters, I think I want to add something like highly detailed or hyper realistic. Uh, we can do two of those and then I'm going to get rid of this Blender 3D and these other things that were already in there by default. Vibes, let's get rid of muted and intricately designed. Get this drop down going. And I'm thinking spontaneous. I'm not sure what a hairy vibe 
is, and I don't think I want to know. And then for the perspectives, I don't want it from below, but let's get rid of that and drop this down and see what else we can work with here. I think we'll go with low angle, and maybe we'll say sunset photo at golden hour. And you might have noticed as we went through and added all these individual elements and took away some that were already there, it's been building a prompt down here. A woman sitting on a park bench, photograph, and shot on her iPhone 11, blah, blah, blah. So all the things we put up here are what was used to develop this prompt. We'll click apply and then it'll put that right down here in our prompt box. And I'll go ahead and hit the blue create button. There's our first generation and I'm not super happy with that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate again. Each time I generate, it is just moving that art box over to the right. It's like dropping the image it created out and then it's moving itself over to the right. If I zoom out the canvas here a bit, you can see what's happening. And since I have the move tool selected, I can drag this around. If I want my generation area front and center, there it is. If I don't like these and I want them out of my way, I can just click on any one of them and come up here and click this clear button. And then it'll ask me, do you want to get rid of this image or clear the entire canvas? I'll clear the entire canvas and now we're we're all fresh and clean. I think I'm going to take sunset out of this prompt so there's just a low angle photo at golden hour because I don't necessarily want the sunset blinding us when we look at the image. I think we've got a decent looking image here. It looks like we have two legs and two arms, two eyes, everything's off to the right start. I'm not so sure about this writing on the bench, but you know, maybe it's just words, I don't know. I think what we really are missing in this picture is a dog. So let's go ahead and in paint a dog in here. I'll come back up right next to our light bulb on this toolbar dealie, and I'm gonna grab the erase tool. And the size of my eraser looks pretty good. If I need to make it bigger, or smaller. I can just slide this little slider to make it whatever size it needs to be. And I'm going to erase the spot where I want the dog to be. So we'll say right about here. It does not have to be perfect. If it had to be perfect, I would never be able to get it because that looks like a snowman or the top of an ice cream cone or I don't know what, but it definitely doesn't look like the silhouette of a dog. So now I'm going to come back, click out of this erase tool, and I need to go grab my art box because whatever you're generating generates inside the art box. Now when we're in painting and we've erased something, it's going to generate wherever there's blank canvas that's inside the art box. So in this case, it's this spot here I've cut out for our dog. And now I need to tell it what to put in that spot. I'm going to say a dog sitting with his human and we'll hit generate. And there's our four legged friend hanging out. Now, if you want to out paint, there isn't a specific button for that. You just drag your art box to whichever way you want to expand the image. We'll say we're going to go over here to the left a bit. And then for your prompt, just use the same prompt you use to generate the overall image. And if like me, you can't remember it or don't want to go type it out, you can come up to this little history button up here, click that, and it'll show you all the history of everything that you've generated. And this is quite different from most other AI image generation platforms as well. Instead of a big gallery, you get a thumbnail and then all the details in sort of a table format and you can search it. If you want to delete an image from your history, there's a delete button. And if you click recover, that'll bring in your prompt and all of your settings, including the seed image into your image generation space. So it'll generate this exact same image. All we needed to grab here is the prompt. So I'm just going to select that, copy it, close it, and bring it back and put it in our prompt box here. Now I'll click the blue magic button. Now this solid colored thing that's over here isn't exactly what I was looking for. Let's try something different. I'll go ahead and just click the undo up on the upper left, get rid of that prompt. Let's say sidewalk, trees, park. And that worked out a little bit better. Usually when you're trying to expand or out paint, it does best if you describe the image over again and let it fill in the blank part. But sometimes you have to tell it specifically what you want in the blank part. Because the art box was including everything over to the right here, that's where it got the reference to do the golden hour, the photograph, the detail, and match up the angle. So I didn't need any of that in the prompt. Now we can move our art box over and there is our masterpiece. If we want to share it with the world, we can come up here and click this yellow upload gallery button and it will ask you to confirm that you're uploading it to their public gallery. I'm not going to do that because I don't think my creation is gallery worthy. If we want to download this image, that's the green download button right at the top. And if we want to upload an image to work with, we can just click this blue upload button at the top. Speaking of buttons at the top, we also have a clear button up here, just like we had a 
clear button when we cleared out those images we didn't want anymore. Since we don't have an image selected, the only option that's enabled is clear the entire canvas. I'm fine with that. I'm done with Our Lady in the Park. Let's come back up to our light bulb, and instead of making manual selections, let's say inspire. And the only thing we have to provide it is a subject. We'll say a 30 year old man. I don't even know what it's done with the rest of these. It's mixed a whole bunch of things together and who knows what it's gonna come up with. Let's go ahead and hit the generate button. Well, that turned out a lot better than anything I was expecting. I figured we'd get something that didn't look like anything by throwing all these different things together. Now, if we click on this image, our art box moved off to the right. It's ready to go do something else. But if we click on this image that we just generated, we've got that clear option that we've already used. If our canvas is small and we hit this zoom image, it'll bring it in a little bigger for us. And then we have the magic button. And you've got some things you can play with underneath the magic button. You can remove the background. You can also do discover prompt which is like describe the image. It'll try and tell you in a sort of prompt format what it sees in the image. You can swap the face after you click the face swap button. Just click here to upload whatever image you want to use for the face and have it go in this spot right here. Now, in my experience, it is not a full head swap. It's literally just the face. It's going to change the facial features and sort of blend them with what's already there. I haven't experimented with it extensively, but so far in my tests, it seems to do well at keeping the style and lighting and everything of the image that you're working with. It blends very nicely. And although I definitely have seen the characteristics of the face that I'm providing as the reference image for the face swap, it may not immediately appear like you're looking in a mirror. Reimagine will get you another variation, a different style of the subject and the image that you've just created. And Restore helps to polish up, or in this case, maybe even polish down the image. I went ahead and did the Restore, and this is what it produced. It's a little less shiny and a lot more natural looking. I think it just sort of fixes some things up in the image to make it overall more aesthetically pleasing. If you click the Upscale button, there's no settings to fiddle with. It just automatically begins upscaling the image to the max resolution. This is a one by one aspect ratio. So when I hit the upscale button, it just immediately started upscaling it to 4x the size. Now keep in mind, and I say this from experience, if you do an upscale where it creates this 4096 by 4096 image, you want to pay attention to that and probably come over here on the top of your art box and change that back down to the default of 1024 by 1024. Otherwise, everything that you create from that point forward will be that 4096 by 4096. 4096 and it takes a little bit longer to generate. Now, as you might have noticed, it's one image generation at a time. You're not getting four variations. And also there is only one concurrent thing happening at a time. So if I have it upscaling this image and it's working on making it this size, I can't just click in another image and say, well, let's do some inpainting on this while that's working. It's one thing at a time. It's probably the smarter way to work, but sometimes it does test my attention span just a tad. If you're digging the simplicity of art space, you might also like the lifetime deal. For $67 one time, you get 500 images per month. You can use them commercially. You get all the features and all the models. If you need more than 500 images a month, they've got a thousand image plan for a one time $117, a 2,500 image per month plan for a one time 187 or unlimited images per month for one time $247. There's a direct link to the lifetime deal page in the description of this video. As far as I can tell, you can't get to that lifetime deal from their main website, you have to have the direct link. And by the way, it is an affiliate link. So if you end up making a purchase, I may receive a small commission and I genuinely appreciate that. Nico, the founder of ArtSpace, reached out to me, told me about the lifetime deal, and offered to provide me with free access to take ArtSpace for a spin. And that's why this video is marked as a paid promotion, because I got complimentary access. Of course, ArtSpace has no idea what I'm going to say in this video, or even any guarantee that I would make one. I'm sure that was their hope in giving me complimentary access, and I have a hard time saying no to a new toy. When it comes to lifetime access to an AI image generator, I was skeptical. So I just asked him directly, how are you doing lifetime access to something that has ongoing cost? Or is this one of these deals where you say it's lifetime access for $67, but as soon as we get in there, there's immediately an upsell for a monthly subscription that you really need in order to make things work. I was a little surprised when he responded almost 
almost immediately. To make a long story short, there's some users that just aren't using that much image generation every month. And for those folks, the $67 lifetime deal is pretty attractive and it's a win-win both for the user and for Artspace. If you get the lifetime deal, you've got what you need to generate images. With that being said, they do offer a monthly subscription, but it's not a deal where you need to have it in addition to the lifetime deal. It's one or the other. You can either go lifetime or you can go monthly or yearly if that's what you prefer. If you prefer the subscription model, you can do a seven day free trial. And then the starting price is $5.99 a month. That gets you 500 images per month, which is the same as the lifetime deal for $67. And everything else is the same. Use them commercially, access to all the features, access to all the models. The subscription plans that are available follow along just like the lifetime deals, just with the option to pay monthly instead of paying once and having access forever. If you want something between monthly and lifetime, they've got yearly billing where you save 20%. So $4.79 a month if you pay annually for the starter plan with 500 images per month. The lifetime deal is what caught my attention because I know there are a lot of folks out there that just don't want to pay a monthly subscription or that already have so many different monthly subscriptions. And I get it, it adds up. And it seems like the days of just buying the software or buying buying access once and then owning it forever are a thing of the past. So I thought it would be great to tell you about this. I hope you found this video helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.